The topic of this video is finding the domain of a function defined by an equation. Let's look at a problem. All right, find the domain of the function p of x equals the principal square root of 17 over the sum x plus 7. Okay, great, let's go through the four steps together. First, step one, start with all real numbers. I'm just gonna write the all real number symbol and I think you know what it means. Step two, even index radicands greater than or equal to zero. Well, we do have a radical in our problem and the index, which is the hidden number here, is two, which is even. So anything underneath the radical, which is the entire fraction, has to be greater than or equal to zero. We need to solve this inequality. Now, the, the method that I'm going to use to solve this inequality is to break this one statement up into two statements. This symbol officially is called greater than or equal to. So what that means is that the 17 over x plus 7 needs to be greater than 0, or the 17 over the x plus 7 needs to be equal to 0. Now, we learned previously that a fraction can only equal 0 if its numerator is 0. And our numerator here is 17. And there's no variable up in the numerator to change that to a zero in any way. So therefore, this is not possible. It doesn't matter what value you choose for x, this fraction will never equal zero. Therefore, this is not part of our solution to this problem. But what is part of our solution to this problem is this inequality. Now, this inequality has the variable x in the denominator. The most common mistake that students make when they solve a problem of this type is they try to multiply both sides by x plus 7. Here's why we can't do that. We're dealing with an inequality. When you multiply or divide an inequality on both sides by a negative, you have to flip the sensor direction of the symbol or the sign. So is x plus 7 positive, negative, or 0? The answer is we don't know. We don't know what x is. If x is a number like 3, then x plus 7 would be 3 plus 7, which is 10, which is positive, and we would not flip the sign. But if x is a number like negative 10, then x plus 7 would be negative 10 plus 7, which is negative 3, which is negative, and we would flip the sign. Because we don't know the value of the variable, we cannot multiply both sides by x plus 7. So what do we do instead? We rely on our properties of inequalities, specifically the reciprocal property. The reciprocal property says that if a fraction is greater than zero, then its reciprocal is also greater than zero. So we get x plus seven over 17 is greater than zero. Now, if we wanted to multiply both sides by 17, that we can do because we know 17 is positive. So we'll write x plus seven over 17 is greater than zero, and we'll multiply both sides of this inequality by 17. All right, so now we get the new statement, the 17s cancel, so x plus 7 is greater than 0. All right, moving the plus 7 to the other side, we get x is greater than negative 7, which, as an interval, is negative 7 comma infinity. Now, we've only completed step 2. We still have to do steps 3 and 4, but before we move on, I want you to notice something. The number negative 7 is not in this collection of numbers because of the parenthesis here. A parenthesis is an excluding symbol. All right, so at the end of step two, we have all the numbers that are bigger than negative seven. Step three, log arguments greater than zero. There are no log arguments. This step is not applicable. Step four, denominator is not equal to zero. I do have a denominator, it's x plus seven. So x plus seven is not allowed to be zero. Moving this to the other side, I get x is not allowed to be negative 7. So I have to remove negative 7 from the collection of numbers I had at the end of step 2. There's just one problem. It's already been removed. Notice the parenthesis. Negative 7 is not in this collection of numbers. Therefore, it has already been removed. I can't remove it again. And my final answer to this problem is negative 7 comma infinity. All right, so this is kind of a tricky problem, and so let me give you sort of a shortcut, uh, a faster way of getting to the answer. So whenever you see a problem of this type where you have an entire fraction underneath a square root, what that's telling you is 
the denominator of that fraction is not allowed to be zero because that would make division by zero happen, which is not possible. And since you need the entire fraction to be positive, because you can only have a positive underneath the square root, that means that the denominator needs to be the same sign as the numerator. So what that's telling me is that this x plus 7 has to be positive to match the sign of the numerator and not equal to 0. So therefore, I write that. Solving this, I get x is greater than negative 7, which is the interval negative 7 comma infinity. This is a much shorter way of getting to the answer, but it only works for problems that are of this very specific type, which is where you have a fraction under a square root, the numerator is just a number, and the denominator is an algebraic expression.